So if we look at it again, just to a little recap, 32-bit operating system means a 32-bit version of Studio One means 32-bit plugins. And you can have the audio engine running at either 32 or 64-bit precision. If you have a 64-bit operating system, you can run either the 32-bit version of Studio One with the 32-bit plugins, or 64-bit version of Studio One with the 64-bit plugins, and they can run alongside each other. You can share your resources, but you will need to do individual configuration of those um, Studio One instances. Now, there's two more tips um, that I, I would like to share with you. Um, one of them is um, how to manage your plugins for both 32-bit and 64-bit if you have both versions of Studio One installed. Um, and for that, let's just quickly switch to my D drive. Now, I have my plugins installed on my D drive because my C drive is pretty much running out of disk space. I've created a VST plugins folder uh, in which I install my 32-bit plugins. And I have a VST plugins 64-bit folder, or 64 folder, in which I install my 64-bit plugins. That will allow me to have each version of Studio One look at a specific folder. I have an overview of where my plugins are. Um, and that just keeps everything nice and tidy and transparent. These two folders contain VST2 plugins. Let me just show you where the VST3 plugins are installed. And they're installed in Program Files, Common Files, VST3. And this is for 64-bit. And Program Files x86, Common Files, VST3 for um, the 32-bit plugins, VST3. Now, the last tip I'd like to give you that has nothing to do with um, the whole bit-related thing, but it's just something that has come up as well a couple of times lately with Windows Vista. Uh, Microsoft introduced something called the user account, um, user access, access control, user access control, right. Um, that's also present in Windows 7, and um, that's an added layer of security which kind of prohibits any application to write directly to program files or the user folder. Now, that is a problem for some plugins because they will need access or Studio One will need access to either the program files folder or your user folder to um, correctly authorize your plugins, especially iKey multimedia plugins um, will need proper privileges for Studio One in order for them to be registered correctly. If you don't run Studio One with administrator privileges, you will need to reauthorize the IQ Multimedia plugins every time you start Studio One. Now, you can do this in two ways. If you incidentally would like to start Studio One as an administrator, you can use this option right here, which says run as an administrator. But if you want to um, run Studio One as an administrator every time you start it, and basically you just double click on the shortcut. You go to properties, you go to the compatibility tab, check this checkbox that says run this program as an administrator. Okay, and you're good to go. And you can now register all your plugins um, and um, that should be it. Okay, I hope I've cleared up some stuff for you um, and I hope this has been a bit helpful um, well happy music making and I'll see you another time cheers <laughs>